Thanks for visiting our sawmill. Robert Milton coming at you today from Hobby Hardwood, Alabama. Sawmill. There are a lot of chainsaw sharpeners out on the market. They range everything from Harbor Freight to top of the line. This is a steel USG chainsaw sharp, super tight. Yes, you can really hurt a chain by using an electric chainsaw sharpener. How do I know this? Because I've gone the progression of cheap as dirt, chainsaw sharpeners all the way up to a professional level. And mainly it's because I could never get satisfactory results out of the cheap ones. I'd burn the chain, I would get it sharpened at the wrong angle. Sometimes it would be worse than it was before I put it on there. And then finally one day I was at my dealer and I walked in the back and I said, come on guys, what do y'all use to sharpen chains? What, I mean, you're a steel dealer. What is a commercial sharp? He just looked at me and he pointed. And I said, oh, that's cool. Where'd you get it from? He says, well, all authorized dealers get these. But you can buy one and they ain't cheap. And I said, well, how many chains have you sharpened on that? He said, seriously? He says, I don't know. We've had it about 10, 15 years and I don't know, a couple hundred thousand chains? Because, I mean, they sharpen uh, for pay as well. So they actually use this to sharpen customers' chains. So I said, well, get me one. And I got it home and I loved it. I threw all my other ones out. I just literally threw them in a the garbage can. And this is the only one I use. It's that good. Essential to any good sharpener, you got to have a good solid clamp. Again, notice the lack of wiggle here. There is no wiggle on this thing. You got to have a good stop. Uh, otherwise, you'll never get proper uh, indexing. Uh, you'll also, now a lot of sharpeners only have a single angle, like this and like that. This one will do this, but will also do the typical steel. Uh, it's a, steel chains have a double angle. They've got a, a bevel this direction, then they also have a bevel that direction. And most sharpeners will have this, they won't have that. I mean, this thing's solid. I got it welded into a base, anchored to a table, and this is a beast. It's not stupid big, but it's stupid good. Five hundred I is pretty cool because the nuts are trapped in the cover plate. How many times have you <laughs> dropped your nuts? You never want to drop your nut, even if it's a chainsaw. Let's go ahead and put it in the old vise here. So you have this stop. You pull the tooth back until it stops and then you clamp it. You want to set your travel, which is set by this guy. So it bottoms out right there. Now what I'm going to do is go forward a little bit. Touch the link. I kind of do this by eye, and then it's just as simply a process. You pull it forward, push it back, give it kind of a double tap. The reason you double tap it is, it kind of gives you an indication of how your teeth are looking. And for me, it helps me figure out where my contact issues are. I mean, you can, you can simply hog it, but I mean, this thing doesn't care. See, this tooth is a little bit off. I mean, Simply drop it down if you want to, but well, this one's way off. Main thing is you don't want to burn your teeth, and you want to make sure that both the top and the gullet are sharp. 
I mean, you can also just kind of do a dead drop like that. This machine doesn't care. It's actually a little better to do a double tap. See, it hardly hit that one. So that was my short one. That was a long one. Now we're not talking stupid long or stupid short, I and mean, we're talking a few, few thousandths of an inch. By and large, it looks like I had done a pretty good job. All right, so I'm back to my index tooth, and we make the adjustment for the other side, which is pretty easy. You get under here, you move this guy to that line, there, take this guy right there, move that to right there, lock it in, and we're done. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty fast, right? We'll come down. And that's it. Now, one thing you're always trying to look for is that tooth the same length as that, and it is, you can eyeball it. If you got a good machine, it's going to be a, almost perfect. This one's a good machine, so guess what? It's almost perfect. So we will simply go and set up on the next one. Let's hit it. Pretty much it. And again, this is one of the cool things about this sharpener. Very few sharpeners on the market will let you just hog something like that. If nothing else, using a machine will true the teeth up. That way, you know everything's the same length, you know everything's at the same angle. This is really rocked up. That may be one of my issues. Now these steels also come with uh, a foot pedal. So you don't have to clamp by hand if you don't want to. You can just simply raise your foot and lower it. I almost got one of those, but the reality is this is so fast it doesn't really, I mean, I'm already, whoop. I'm done. I had somebody comment the other day that I'm always wearing my hobby hardwood hat. I made some joke that I do it to hide my baldness, which I'm not. But just to prove I'm not bald, look, I've got hair and it's gray. It's kind of long and fuzzy because it's winter time. And in the winter time, see, look, I don't even have a bald spot, I don't think. I don't know. Do I? Nope. It's all there. Uh, but getting gray. A little receding right there. But, you know, I'm 60, almost 60 years old, so what are you going to do? But I still got my hair. Please like and subscribe. Put comments on there. Um, I try to answer pretty much every one that gets on there and also um, it helps the YouTube algorithm find me so other people can watch me sharpen a chainsaw the easy way. So there's still a trade-off though between a machine or the file but I like them both and it's nice to have both in my arsenal so I can just knock them out that quick. But either way, y'all have a good day. I'm going to, let's walk over to the sawmill. Let's knock out some logs. Thanks for visiting our sawmill. Click on the links above to see more of our videos.